Where do we stand with fruit? Is it good for us or is it now unhealthy? Every week it seems like there's conflicting news articles. Today I'm going to dive into the truth and help eliminate all confusion regarding the topic of fruit and fruit sugar. Let's dig in. Hey everyone, Dr. Priest here. Today I'm talking about fruit sugar, specifically fructose, which many of us are familiar with. Fruit is good, and I'm going to make a case for that today, and I'm gonna help clear up some of the confusion regarding it. Fruit is good, it's amazing. When it comes to sugar in general, there's many players out there. There's glucose, fructose, sucrose, dextrose. These are the big four that we encounter, as well as lactose, I would say, which is found in milk. But fructose is predominantly the sugar found in fruit. And let's be clear, when it comes to sugar in general, even fructose, Processed foods are the biggest source of added sugars. Let's not get it twisted. That's the biggest source. In fact, the majority of American calories come from significantly processed foods such as breads, pastries, desserts, sweet treats, cookies, etc. That is where we get most of our added sugars from, and these are just empty sugars that are just being dumped into you, all right? It's a combination of sugar, flour, and oil that's highly inflammatory. Something that I always warn against is these processed foods. But a lot of people are afraid of fruit, which we all know is good for you, but there's a subtle fear. It's like, should I actually be eating this, or is it bad for me? Fruit is in a league of its own, let's be real. Fruit does contain sugar, it has fructose in it, a naturally occurring form of fructose, which is sugar, that's fine, because it's also contained with fiber. Fiber is good because it slows down the absorption of sugar, so you don't get huge spikes of your blood sugar. That's really important, that's one of the most important factors when you're consuming sugar. It also is really rich in vitamins and minerals, which help your body stay active and build and it also contains polyphenols and carotenoids. These are molecules that make food medicine. You ever hear about like food being medicine? They're compounds within fruits and vegetables that literally have an effect that is similar to a prescription medication that can help turn on processes, turn off processes. It helps to influence the microbiome in your gut, the diversity of it. It helps to actually clear out bad bacteria throughout your gut. There's antiviral properties, antibacterial properties. It's wonderful. These are great compounds, so you want to be getting them. But when you're eating these processed foods, like most Americans, you're not getting the polyphenols and carotenoids you would normally get from fruit. So you gotta understand, there's a lot of wonderful, good things that's coming with fruit. So I don't think we should just erase that completely. Now, when it comes to fruit and talking about sugar, we need to talk about the term glycemic load. What that is, you maybe have heard of glycemic index. I do talk about that in other videos. And glycemic load is a bit of a better picture because it reflects your blood glucose and the insulin response to that food based on like the dose of that food, all right? So how well it's gonna spike the glucose and your insulin, how it's going to respond to that food. This is a better marker than glycemic index. So when it comes to glycemic load, less than 10 is the most desirable in general, okay? So I'm gonna give you some examples of a glycemic load. So when it comes to a donut, we're right on the cusp there at 19. That's a really high glycemic load. That's one medium donut. So that would be like one serving of a donut. It also has 255 calories. Additionally, let's go down to an orange. Maybe you think an orange is really sweet. It only has a glycemic load of five to contrast. And it's much lower calories. It's 69 calories. A banana, which a couple years ago, people were fear-mongering bananas as sugar sticks. Glycemic load is 10 that's almost half of what a donut is. That's crazy. Blueberries, glycemic load six. A Coca-Cola, which is just like water and sugar, glycemic load of 16. And you gotta understand also, when we increase the portion size, that's also gonna increase the load. So that's just an eight ounce Coca-Cola example. So a 16 ounce would have a higher glycemic load. But are you seeing here, based on these examples, that fruit, and I mean like, How often are you gonna go eat four oranges in a row? Most people just have one, a single serving, or like one or two servings at a time. Most people aren't even eating enough fruit to spike the glucose enough and to have a significant glycemic load. Do you see how that is different there? And there might be some exceptions to this, and if you're living an inflammatory lifestyle, 
then I suppose you could take that into consideration, but the vast majority of Americans aren't. If you're a diabetic who's constantly eating processed food and you have really uncontrolled blood sugars, should you just binge a ton of fruit? No, but most people don't do that. We don't eat that way. We don't eat fruit that way. We're eating small amounts of fruit. We're eating sustainable portion sizes that's not spiking the blood glucose like some of the other foods, like the desserts, like the pastries, etc. So when it comes to somebody with super uncontrolled diabetes, metabolic syndrome, cancer, autoimmune disease, and some other special examples, with those people, perhaps they're on a super low carb diet or we're like really trying to avoid fructose um, to unburden the liver. These are special clinical cases. And in those cases, I usually try and keep the fructose dose per day to less than 25 grams per day. So here's a chart that breaks down the amount of fructose within the common fruits out there. So if you look apricot, cranberries, lemons, these are like around one gram total. Um, the higher end of things is gonna be dried fruits like figs and apricots. That's when you're approaching 16, 23. Grapes are at 12 grams of fructose in a serving. A pear is 12 grams of fructose in a serving. Blueberry is seven grams of fructose in a serving. So even with that, most people aren't even gonna be exceeding this 25 grams per day. Supplemented paleo diet is what I recommend for pretty much everybody because it is going to be the most broad spectrum diet for helping you lose weight, keeping the weight off, and helping with a lot of the chronic diseases we deal with as Americans. With the paleo diet, there's a consideration of seasonal eating patterns. patterns. Not all fruit is available year round. So to have blueberries in mid-December is kind of unusual because they're not being harvested around that time. Additionally, most people are eating smaller quantities of fruit. They're not eating, you can go eat like six donuts at a time. I've done it before, it's awesome. But how often are you gonna go eat like seven oranges in a row? It just isn't happening. Another consideration is eating organic fruits because when you look up the dirty 15, 15 most pesticide infused and, and ge genetically modified fruits or foods, a lot of them are these fruits that are pretty common, like blueberries and strawberries, I believe, are on there. So eating organic and non-GMO would be another component that's really beneficial. But overall, I hope this sheds some light on fruit and fruit sugars. We don't have to be afraid of it. Fruit is good. It's really healthy. And keep eating fruit, okay? You're probably not going to eat tremendously large servings enough to cause you harm. Thank you for watching.